The Team Never Quit podcast is sponsored by Navy Federal Credit Union. Navy Federal Credit Union's cash rewards card will help you slay this season. Learn more at NavyFederal.org. Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of the Team Never Quit podcast. Marcus, John, how you guys doing today? You know, man, blessed and unstoppable. Excellent. Excellent, excellent. Hey, we start every episode off with a Patreon question of the day. Kind of just gets our, our gear spinning. It is 10 o'clock on a Monday morning, so sometimes you need that little extra. I've got, this episode is dropping in December, so I've got some kind of holiday questions for you guys. Were you the kind of kid who tried to open your Christmas presents early to see what they were? I never, did you do that, Dave? I was a straight up sneaker around the house, man. I was ninja <laughs> it around. I was searching out the stuff. Like, where could they possibly hide this? You know, what? I was on a mission from a young kid. Yeah. And, and the parents were countering always. So, yeah, I was hunting. <laughs> I would definitely shake the packages. Like, oh, yeah. can, I, can I hear what it is? Can I uh, guess? You shake things, huh? Yeah, I was a shaker. <laughs> what is that? <laughs> I never got, no, I never did that. I never did it. I, I, I have the greatest video of my daughter we had home alone on the tv and that that jingle was playing yeah and literally i videoed her going through every package shaking it kind of twisting <laughs> it down. And at the very end she turned around and saw me and it's one of my favorite videos she must have been four uh but i know i never did it i think i was scared to death of my pops or finding something in their closet next to the oh, present yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, our, our, our parents are crazy man they had some weird stuff in the closet <laughs> What about, okay, so that rolls me to the next one. What is your favorite Christmas movies? Oh, Christmas Vacation. Day one, week one, December 1st, when that rolls in, that's the first thing goes on the television. We have a list now. But that's the, yep. go, that's the go-to right there. Christmas Vacation is awesome. Yep. Uh, you know, the kids also... I, I'm a huge Wolf Ferrell fan. That guy cracks me. Oh, yeah. Elf. Same thing. Yeah. Elf. That's yeah. a mandatory so one, too. A Christmas uh, story is New Year's Eve through Christmas. We don't watch it up, and you have to watch it on that day. It's got some, we got some weird rules. Which one? Because isn't there several of them? The one with Ralphie. There's only one. Yeah. The Christmas Yeah, with the Red, with Red Rider. Red Rider. BB. Thank the, you. Uh, That's why most BB seals are seals. <laughs> Red Rider. <laughs> uh, the lamp. <laughs> yeah. Elf's great. Uh, the, uh, all the Home Alones, and then <laughs> Die Hard is obviously a Christmas movie. Anybody yes. says not. I mean, it obviously is. So is Lethal Weapon. Thank you. It has Christmas it's, in it. It does. <laughs> You're right. It I does. Think about that. I, I, I put a lot of thought in this. Yeah. I mean, I have it all written down. We have a different <laughs> Christmas right. movie every day. Will <laughs> Ferrell's the best, man. Like, Daddy's favorite. Home, yeah. one and two. Oh, yeah. oh, it's yeah. great, man. So yeah. good. As the, the kids got older, we introduced the whole... I'm like, look, Die Hard is a Christmas movie. we got to be watching this. So <laughs> we introduced that right as... About the time they hit like 10, I'm like, yeah, you're good. You, mm-hmm. All right, okay, you made it. <laughs> <laughs> all right, son, you're almost a man. I want to introduce you to what Christmas is all about. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, well, we've got a great guest in store for you guys. Dave Sears is a United States Navy SEAL veteran with more than 20 years of tactical and strategic experience. He has planned, led, and executed hundreds of special operations missions in more than 40 countries on five continents and received numerous awards and decorations for his service in the military. Dave, welcome to the show, man. Thank you for having me. Really, really an honor. Yeah, thanks again for doing this, Brad. I, the, uh, it's always a pleasure when we get teammates on just hearing the stories. And now that yeah. we back it up too, uh, the best part is when we start to talk about Bud stories, like, all right, man, let out, you can let it out now because I failed a lot of stuff going through Bud's and then when I became a team guy, I was like, I never failed to run, I never failed to swim, I was the best in Bud's. <laughs> and, <this. laughs> and then when we get out, everyone, every, every team guy knows that's, that's bullshit, right? Yeah, right. Uh, but that's a, that's a great thing about Bud's. I mean, we're both. Yeah, I did the yeah. I did the correspondence course, so I wrote in and took my test that way. It seemed to be yeah, online much easier path. <laughs> yeah, online. <laughs> One of them onla- online frogs. Yeah, I remember when that when that came online. And then they started. There was that time when they were paying the guys to go back through Hell Week, or not back through. Excuse me, the guys coming up got that bonus that they made it through Hell Week. We didn't get nothing. Kicking the ass. No, I was what was I? I was one ninety one. I was I think the hardest buds class of ever. Course. Hardest ever. buds class ever. <laughs> <laughs> so i've been talking i've been razzing the new guys about uh any 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 buds class under 300 so the first 300 you had 300 spartans and the first 300 buds class those were the real hard ones and then everything after that i don't even want to hear them talk <laughs> doesn't even count they don't even count they don't have a cool name like we do yeah they're doing it on zoom now that's it <laughs> yeah. go, go jump in the cold shower yeah that's great. all right shower 20 minutes now go out to here yeah. <laughs> that's right. go get your kids sandbox jump in mom's deep freeze that's right, exactly. 
Where'd you, where were you there. born? I was actually born in Chicago, but only lived there for a little bit. Then went to uh, Philly, Philly area, and then up to Harrisburg. My dad was a corporate guy, so we moved around like that. But then I ended up like junior high and high school, kind of formative years in Colorado, just south of Denver in the foothills. Do do corporate? Do, y'all, do they have nicknames like military brat, like brats, like a military people move around? Do corporates have the same thing? You know, I, I don't know. I never. You'll have a club no, like like the military one. brats. So corporate are you brats. city? What's that? Then you, you grew up in the city then? No, no, in Colorado, I was out. Oh, I'm the sorry. Okay. Out in the, all right, all right. I was going to ask, yep. I mean, like when you when you figured out you wanted to be a frog man, because people ask me that question. Like, is, is the difference between you city kids and the country kids and the mountain boys? I'm like, man, we're all in there. There's like smart guys, like real smart guys. There's, there's, we got dumbasses that, you know, become smart. And we got everybody. No, there's, a, there's such a good mix. So it wasn't. I mean, I knew even from a young age, I, I did live in the city when I was in Pennsylvania and Philly and Harrisburg, but it's, it's the same sort of jungle. So right. you're oh, doing sure. right. like, yeah. you're running around shooting at each other, but this time you're hopping over fences and roofs and yeah. running across tops of garages and stuff and getting in all sorts of trouble. And then when you go to Colorado, I'm more in the woods and we're out like playing paintball and shooting at each other and running around on the golf course and throwing rakes at each other and. Yeah. trying to hide and play capture the flag you know yeah those are the guys that make it because we did the same thing i, I tell people man like, if you live in the country your ass better have a city friend if you can get one i mean yeah. at, at least sometime in your life because you can't yep. believe you how much fun you can have sp- there's, there's different smarts that goes with the city it, completely and you're right it is a jungle either a concrete one or we actually in the concrete jungle they put the animals in cages and they live around them out here we live with them. I mean, them suckers are running around. It's a so you've got to keep your eyes on them, and survival is kind of tough out here. But it did. I I noticed a lot of the skill sets that I picked up as I was growing up, running around out in the woods. That that helped me going going through training and in the teams for sure. For sure. How yeah, it does, you? and it's good to have that mix. You know, you'll get the guys that are. We we had one guy. You know, his nickname was whatever some animal. Uh, but he could now. He was a Louisiana dude who yeah. could nab it didn't need a compass for anything you're like how the hell this guy knows where he's going all the time he's just knew the woods and knew all that and i i had that advantage too i knew the woods and i kind of had this sense of direction about me that really helped later and then i had some urban background too and guys have that so it take it takes all kinds and it takes it to come together as that team you're pulling from everybody's best experiences yeah that's that is an absolute true statement I didn't think about it like that because that because we talk we're always talking so not only do you get their perspective you get the, what where they come from perspective it's yes, like boiling exactly. down the truth like someone to tell me who grew up in the city he tell me something that's true there where he has to grow up but not fact but tr- but truth which is kind of that's a hard discernment and then when we get in there and we started rolling together and something happened you get all those different angles for the same problem and, and and that's when those light bulbs, because you could have one instructor trying to explain something and maybe a couple people will get it, and then some people just aren't hearing it. But if everyone's coming in on it, they're like, oh, oh yeah, yeah. Okay, now I see what you're talking about. No, you're right. Those perspectives are important, right? Think about when we went back to before we had all the nice drones and things like that and shit flying overhead. Well, we used to do these recons. Oh, yeah. Where you tried to get a 360 degree view of the target, right? You had to wander around that target, send your little two man teams out to get all the angles you could. Well, that's the same thing is you're trying to find the truth of that target and those different perspectives. And when you bring them all together, you get a full picture because it is all the truth is everybody's truth is their truth, Correct. the way they see it right. and the perspective they see it from. So when you bring those together as a team and these diverse backgrounds, you get this really powerful thing. That's why they had to do what they had the, to create us to beat the way they beat us down is that humbleness that comes in there to, to, to when you're hearing those because you don't, you don't give a damn about anything else. You want to hear them talk because the day sucks so bad. And not only that, you kind of understand their perspective because they could they could say something to you and be like I I didn't get I didn't understand that part of it. How how how, how do you how'd you come about that? Right. Yeah. And then when you start to see that, it opens it up to where. Man, the argument stuff's off. We don't have to deal with that. Man, if, if I don't understand something you're saying, I don't get pissed off about it. I need to understand why you're saying it. Yeah, exactly. It, it needs to all kind of come together. I got into watching this with my son. He started, and my daughter watches it too. You ever watch that show, Forged in Fire? Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. love it. 
Okay, so you're taking these different metals, right? When they do this cancer thing, they're combining these different steels or different types of metal and putting them together and they're making these Damascus blades or these different things, but it all has to weld together to make that solid tool. So you're taking all these different parts from the teams, you're breaking them down in buds, and then you're making those welds into one block. And yeah. you can't have those cracks in it. You can't have fissures. It's got to be done just right to get that perfect blade. Yeah. Just to beat it, that's buds is just when they're beating us. That's the, the, the melting, the, the smelt, yeah. whatever that thing's called. Yep. And then when we get in there, that's the sharpening, dulling, polishing out part exactly they're, sure. they're making those welds good so that they get one solid block that then they can shape and it's going to freaking last I, man i don't i was talking about this the other day when that when the so you take the british sas and you take their outline of what their special forces was and the one that we had and put those together you can kind of have an idea what it's going to create but the when those things combine together you don't have any idea what the middle part looks. i mean there's something about that program when them guys come out one, the sense of humor is completely changed. Normally, you put somebody through a program like that, they're going to need to shrink for a long time. They don't, we don't. We're no, our we own don't. shrink. I, it's, it's unbelievable. Because I try to tell but, people some of the stuff that, that they don't see on TV. And no matter how many books are out there and the TVs and the movies, stuff, you know what I'm talking about. There's the other stuff that we have to go through that, that we don't even bring it up. It's like that's our privilege of being in the community. And what that freaking creates, you could have never imagined how, how I think about that. I'm like, how did we even exist? How do we make it through that without not only losing our minds, but we're proficient at what we do? Right. It is an amazing product. It makes this brotherhood. It makes that solid piece of steel that you have so many bonding experiences. And the it is the humor in the misery, right? Yeah. You're with yeah. your teammates and you, you learn to in embrace the misery and actually love it yeah, love a it. lot of times you come out on the back end and you're like that was so fucking miserable Dude, miserable it was awesome <laughs> it was awesome <laughs> it was so awesome <laughs> yeah. i say that sometimes people look at me like i'm crazy I'm like i know you don't get it man but if you understood like there are a section of us that are designed for that that are specifically designed for it man and when we get into it it's like getting fed uh, it is and you'll see guys will take, like you see this in buds right classes will come together when they're getting hammered the most most yeah and they're really getting it and they're yelling at it we had ones in like third phase where we're they we did something that pissed off the instructors we had oh we, we left one of the instructor surfboards back we didn't load on the plane going out to the island yeah and oh man he was hot yeah so he had is, us in surf torture and us in third phase and people were all the whole class just yelling at them screw you yeah. we ain't ever gonna quit go to hell <laughs> i mean pissed yeah and bonding dave how did you get started like tell us about your childhood and why you wanted to get in the teams in the first place yeah it was a i mean i was always into you know i was reading the mac bowling books growing up and these you know stories about vietnam and stuff i had an uncle that was in vietnam and I was always fascinated with special forces in general. You know, it started with sort of the Green Berets, and then I started reading about the SEALs, and you'd see all these different experiences. I knew I didn't want to be part of a the the conventional sort of piece and marching with four thousand other guys to take a hill and just one amongst you know thousands. I wanted to be part of something that was more. I was always an independent thinker, uh, so. I started pursuing going to the military to pay for help pay for college. So I had a, an ROTC scholarship and I had a, a, a alternate appointment to the Naval Academy. So I looked at it. You, most alternates make it. They flew me out there for a visit and everybody's in uniform and super military. And I was like, I can't do this. Uh, this is too military. This isn't for me. Like they're all yelling the same things together and they're all sort of marching in mass. I, I would never survive here. So I went the ROTC route and initially I didn't have 2020 vision. So I thought, Hey, I can't even go seal teams. This sucks. Uh, but I'll go EOD or diver, do something, serve my time, all that. And then as luck would have it, you know, my roommate's stepbrother was a seal who had gotten out after five years or so and was going to Harvard med. And he's like, what are you doing? You don't need 2020 vision. 
going to the SEAL teams. I'm like, hell yeah. So now I'm back on that track. And it was just always a natural, I didn't want to be part of the crowd. I wanted to be part of this unit that was special. I wanted to be part of some sort of a brotherhood that was able to make independent decisions that encouraged creative thinking that was filled with just other smart people. And I, I never looked back. Yeah, that's, I remember going through that same thing. And it, bless the American people for developing a program for some guy, for guys like us. Because when, yeah. when you kind of go down the checklist of what it is that's in that sucker, every one of them calls to you. I was like, oh, yeah, I'd love to do that. Oh, I, I really <laughs> like to do that. And it, the, the, yeah, exactly. It challenges, you know, it's a challenge physical. It's, it's a mental challenge. It's you're surrounded by incredible people. It's a very rare air to be in. I mean, there's not many people who do it in reality. And you just look at all the, it just fit. Like you said, there's this kind of checklist you're going down going, this fits. And I, I'd also say that there was, cause there's some things you look at and you're like, oh, I mean, that could be cool. You know, I, I could check that out. And then there's things where it's like, I have to do that. I, I, I mean, that, that calls to me every piece of that. And that's how I felt about it. The more I read, the more I wanted to read. And I think that what that does is that builds up that excitement. Cause when we get in there, that's the first thing that leaves. <laughs> <laughs> This episode of the podcast is brought to you by Athletic Greens, the health and wellness company that makes comprehensive daily nutrition really, really simple. You guys, I have been trying my best to eat healthier, to work out every day, just make those better decisions. You know, the holidays can really make it hard to stick to the schedule, make it stick to a routine, you know, whether it's a busy schedule or poor sleep or the, the amazing, amazingly unhealthy food that you eat during the holidays, sometimes not eating enough of the right foods can leave us deficient in this key nutritional areas that you gotta have to be healthy. And this is where Athletic Greens helps us out. AG1 by Athletic Greens is the category leading superfood product. They are bringing the comprehensive and convenient daily nutrition to everybody. They keep up with the research. They know what to do. And they know a bunch of pills and supplements and this and that can be hard on the stomach and it's certainly hard to keep up with. And to help each of us be our best, they have simplified the path to better nutrition by giving you the one thing you need with all of the best things. One tasty scoop of AG1 contains 75 vitamins, minerals, and whole food sourced ingredients, including a multivitamin, a multimineral, probiotic, green superfood blend, and more in one convenient daily serving. Now, their special blend of high quality bioavailable ingredients and a scoop of AG1 work together to fill the nutritional gaps in your diet. That's going to support energy and focus. It's going to aid with gut health and digestion. It's going to support a healthy immune system, effectively replacing multiple products or pills with one healthy, delicious drink. The easy thing for me is I have this kind of go-to breakfast protein shake, I guess I make every morning. And it is a banana, it is some almond butter, it is some cinnamon, it is ice, it is almond milk. There's a couple other things in there. I can't think of all of them right now. Okay, I'm on the spot. But one scoop of Athletic Greens added to the mix gives you everything you need to make sure you're kind of filling in those gaps. And it is lifestyle friendly. So whether you eat keto, paleo, vegan, dairy-free, or gluten-free, it contains less than one gram of added sugar. So no GMOs, no chemicals or artificial anything while keeping it tasting good. So join the movement of athletes, life leads, moms, dads, rookies, first timers, and never quitters all who are taking ownership of their daily health and focusing on the nutritional products that you really need all in the simplest manner possible. To make it easy, Athletic Greens is going to hook you guys up with an immune supporting free one year supply of vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. If you visit Athletic Greens dot com slash tnq today again simply visit athleticgreens.com slash tnq take control of your health and give ag1 a try so i mean you gotta because <laughs> that first day it no matter what you read or what you think it's like yeah. whoa it was intense but um Kind of like, I, I remember having that feeling though absolutely 100 percent. were you yeah, it is. It, were you physically prepared for that or like were you athletic guy or did you do you think you were ready for that yeah I, I i was you know and the the guy who helped me out was actually gave really good advice you know he he talked about the whole never quit like hey how do i make it through butts he's like it's 
easy. Don't quit. That's all they'd say. That's it. Don't quit. It's easy. He's like, it's not, it's really hard concept to execute, but he's like the whole, that's all, that's all the advice I'm going to give you. I'm not going to tell you what goes on there. You you won't want to go if you know. (laughs) So that's true. And (laughs) even if we didn't like back in the 1900s, we just had like one documentary, the silent option and all those books. Exactly. You know, shit, man. You're going to be like, (laughs) what is this? <laughs> like, how is this happening? How is this legal? Me? I mean, I'm pretty sure this is yeah. crazy. Yeah, and so you physically, I was a good athlete. I wasn't a stellar athlete, but I played like three season sports. So I had, you know, a good background in sports and athleticism. I was strong, but not the strongest. I was fast, but not the fastest. I wasn't breaking any records. I was, you know, even in buds, I was right about top. 20, 25% or so. I wasn't crushing the record or running five minute miles or, you know, benching 300 pounds or yeah. swimming Olympic times. Cause we have those but guys, they're in there. They, they get, are in there. They get special doubt. attention for sure. But you had, but what he's telling me is that you're physically good enough to do this. It's all mental after that. So you've got enough physical fitness and a lot of people do, and it's not, that's not the deciding factor. The deciding factor is your mental attitude and are you gonna quit or not? I mean, that's that's it, bottom line. I remember one of the, one of the instructor farmer, I'll never forget him, great guy. Wasn't a big, like, you know, most of our guys walk around, even if they're, doesn't matter, they're up and down. It's they're, they're, And he could haul, at, you know, one of those cheetahs we had in the speed runners. Yep. They would just, <laughs> They make the best buds instructors because they just crush everybody. I was like, man, how do how you run so fast? He's like, man, I don't know, man. I can just run. That was his advice to me. <laughs> just run and faster. Then the, yeah. And then the other one, they always said, it's easy. Just don't quit. You're like, God, okay. run to that. Yeah, that's their advice. Don't it, quit. You, we had, guys one, would come had in there instructor and say, who was really, he later became my troop chief at DevGrew. Um, we went through, became really good friends, did a lot of work together in the later years. And I remember him showing up. He was an instructor there, pretty new. And he came out for the run. He was one of these cheetahs, but he'd come out smoking a cigarette. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Had That's a cigarette. And he's like, hung let's over. go, gents. <laughs> off in boots and soft sand. And he would take off at this clip. And you're like, what the fuck? We'd circle up and he'd grab a cigarette from the van. And he'd be like, hey. And then he'd cheat it back out again. And, you know, years later, I run into him. And he ends up becoming my troop chief in, at Damn Neck. And... Same guy. He's awesome. Yeah. He's just incredible. You know, we did some incredible shit together and they all want you to succeed is yeah, that's one the, of the things people don't get either. Right. You know, they would prefer to graduate an entire class. Yeah, every all single of us, one. Right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. True statement. But they, they also want to weed out who doesn't, who's not the diamond. Yeah. It's not the personal, the program's the program. And the blessing it, right. is the is the the those instru- the instructors when they get it because most some of these guys are the I mean the most likable best guys but they make the biggest asses I mean they they come up there are some creative ways to punish a human being and budget <laughs> budget structures, you're, you're you're allowed to allowed to hone in yeah. that yeah <laughs> work that well, I mean, just to watch that stuff how could you not go in there and have the best day and laughing just at what what the yeah. students have to go through and when you're going through it I mean it's misery it's hell it is. And the minute they t- the, you're allowed to turn around and see, <clears throat> it's, it's funny how different that is. I was talking to some yeah. guys. I was like, I, was I a Navy SEAL bef- the day before I got my Trident? And they're like, no, you weren't. Reason being is because everyone else has to acknowledge that and, gra- right. and, gra- and grant us our uh, that. They have to grant us that. Yeah. No matter how much we train, if you make it to the last day of training and they don't acknowledge the fact that they, they, that's how you know, mm-hmm. then you're not one. And it was... Yeah that's that's the deal and it's, it's such an empowering thing when somebody recognizes it because then you then it that confidence sets in i, re, I remember it that was the one thing i got when they had me out plumb with that confidence is set inside me and i looked down and saw that bird on our chip because you're not allowed to touch it beforehand uh, like the instructors will chase you around try to pin it on you and you don't even want to touch that sucker uh, it's gotcha. bad you know it's yeah, like one of the voodoo that, on yeah. you <laughs> yeah and we, put that you know, on me when, when i went through it was still a different program they didn't have the uh did you go through the SQT? I was the last was... class to have to go through a Trident board. and Oh, okay. So, so I, I, had, yeah. I had my Trident board, got my Trident, and then my brother was the first class to get theirs out of SQT. Okay, yep. So that's a, di- you know, it's a different system. There's yeah. a whole, I you go to the team and you're under like at least a six month probation. Six months, yeah, at least. Where all your peers, these are all your peers and the people you're going to work with. And it's the same for an officer. All yeah. the enlisted are sitting there going, 
no, we want you to have it or we don't. And mm -hmm. so you feel this, you're joining this community and part of you're accepted into this brotherhood by your peers. And it's not just some metric and you pass some test. Oh, yeah. They have to give you the sign off and go, you're accepted. Yeah. Now get to work. Uh, yeah, check the one, get to work. My, when, the, when they showed up, when that first class showed up with their tridents on their chest, I remember the Chiefs took them off and put them in a, we bought a bird cage, put them in, in the bird cage and hung it on the ceiling <laughs> so they could come look at them. <laughs> and then they would show up the next day and the, and the door would be open on the cage and all the tridents would be out, like stuck in the ceiling. And be oh. like, man, you better go find your bird somewhere. <laughs> Sucker's flying. <laughs> oh, that's, that's awesome. Good that's times, funny. man. So you talked about obviously being physically prepared, essentially. Uh, we talk a lot about the mental toughness aspect, and I feel like a lot of our listeners out there, kind of just the regular guy, struggles with that piece. What what kind of advice, you know, could you give to our listeners about that piece of the things, you know, or piece of the puzzle? You know, I think it's um, so. In in my book, I actually write about all the seal maxims and the different pieces we've had, and I take them from different perspectives, and never quits one of those, right? So that is about, you know, delaying your immediate gratification and having a long-term intentional sort of goal is what allows you to never quit. And you have this attitude and you go, hey, what is my intention and motivation behind this? What am I doing? And then you have to, depending on the circumstance you're in, scale your future, meaning at Bud's, some guys had to go, you know, hell week, they would go day to day, meal to meal, evolution to evolution, rock to rock, light pole to light pole, push up to push up, whatever it takes, as long as this is adding to your future and where you want to go, you just take that next step to get there. And that's what, take the next step. That's the never quit piece. And as long as it's adding to you, then you're good to go. And I, I, but I also talk about the opposite side of this that people need to understand as well. We don't live in a world of absolutes. So there is moving on from something that's detrimental to you and that's not quitting. So if you're in an abusive relationship, if you're addicted to drugs or something like that, that's okay. Move on from that. That's not quitting. So the difference, how do you tell the difference, right? I, I say it as quitting you're going to have a regret. And hey, you'll know so it. If you, you'll you'll, you'll freaking know, know it. Right you, then you and there, you'll know it. Yep. When you move on from something, it's a fresh start. You have no regrets. So moving on is if something's damaging you, it's time to cut that away. We've all had toxic people in our lives and different shit. And you're like, I'm not quitting our friendship or I'm not quitting our relationship. I'm moving on. It's not on yeah. me. This is no longer helping me get towards my goals. Or I graduated or I, or I leveled up or I upgraded. I mean, whatever you need to tell That's yourself right. to where, like if you were going through school, would you keep going back to school once you got your job and like concentrating on the, no, no, no. There's there, just like with us, we wouldn't keep going back through buds. That's right. Yeah, exactly. Right. You wouldn't do that. So you have, but that never quit sort of attitude is one step after another. You just keep putting that foot forward as long as it's getting you towards your goal and it's not hurting you. And I'll take some guys and compare it to, um, you don't want to get into the stupid range of things in terms of like, think about some of the guys that climb Mount Everest, you know, a lot of guys or do mountaineering. They go up there and they make this climb and a lot of guys have been killed because they're never quit attitude. So they're not being smart about this. The weather changes, shit happens in the environment. You got to take that into context and you go, Sometimes it's best to go ahead and move back and come back another day, you know, alive. So that's not, you got, it's a really fine line of what's quitting and what's not quitting, but quitting definitely leads to regret because you gave up because it was too hard or too uncomfortable. Moving on is it was damaging you and not good for you and you'll have no regrets. So, you know, one step in front of the other is really. I remember when we learned like going through Hell Week. I thought before I was in the teams, I thought if you made it through Hell Week, that was you were a Navy SEAL. <laughs> Come to find out, that's not even a damn thing. And it's a hard, it's so terrible. And all we got was a damn t shirt out of it. That's it, a freaking t shirt, man. And then they're, they're back on you. And the one and they're thing, right back on you. Yeah, right back on you. And you're right, the, the no absolutes, there's only one that I've, I've seen, and that's change. And those cancel yes. each other out, right? 
So if you don't like the situation, it'll change. If you like it, it'll change. And we didn't, I remember, I don't know when I, when we learned this part, but the only easy day was yesterday. What you truly mean is like some people dwell on the past. I'm like, yes, uh, like years back. I'm like, did y'all, I was like, man, we don't even think about yesterday. It was so damn miserable. I don't want to think about that because you know today's here and it's kicking my nuts. And tomorrow, even though I don't know it's gonna, if I'm gonna be here or it's gonna be here, it's probably gonna be something I gotta deal with, not the back end. And we got really good at eliminating that. Yeah, uh-huh. you do. And that's I think that's how you come out of this saying. Yeah. Is you cannot so you equate the only easy day was yesterday. I equate it to you don't drive your car looking in the rearview mirror. You know, you glance in that thing yeah. for some reference and some learning, but it's the road ahead. 95% of your time is spent looking at that road ahead and dealing with that. And that, whatever was in that road behind you doesn't guarantee if that road was straight or if it was curved, has no bearing on what the road in front of you is going to be. So now you got to navigate it, right? And you have this future mindset instead of this past mindset. And that's what people wallow in this stuff where they think, they often think, you know, one of the psychological things is that we think that our current state, just like you said, Marcus, is change is the only constant. And so the state you're in is going to change. The freezing cold that you're in and surf torture, it's going to change. It's going to get better. You're going to, it's going to change again and you're going to be back in it. Where you're at now is not where you're going to be forever. So yeah. it will change. Keep moving forward and it'll change. I remember how much we learned to appreciate the good times because when the hard ones showed up. But then they also taught us to have a good time in those because then we get to activate with each other. That's right. And it wasn't work yep. to us. And, I, and, yeah. and this, 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 bond, this, this, this only that, applies right? to other team guys, man. But like when we're out there and like one of our buddies is really suffering, it's so we're there suffering with them, but they make the best faces and they say the most miraculous things when they're, when, when the, when the, stress is on us yeah that's kind of why you get, we sit in it just to hear those stories and like man guys will complain in the funniest way and then when we have to go actually do something your mind completely turns off of it and we shift back and then we get back home and it's it's like yeah you know it was, it was all worth it but i remember when they taught us to every time an evolution would, we would fail something or guys would die and they would bring them back like in the pool They're like hey you want to quit They're like no i don't want to quit and they throw them back in there yeah. suckers are drowned again pull them back yeah. out you want to quit up until the point where if someone tells us you need to quit something, we turn them off. You can tell me to shift to something else, get, but if you if you put something in front of me and, and you activate me on it, I, and then tell me to quit it, I, that's that's a problem. And I didn't yeah, pick exactly. that I didn't pick that up with us until later in life. Let's take a second to thank our sponsors over at 10,000. You guys know I've been trying to get back on the workout train. I've been trying to eat healthier. I've been trying to work out. You guys have heard me talk about it a couple times now, maybe more. Might sound like a broken record, but I mean it. When it comes to going to the gym, you want to look good, obviously, but more importantly, you know you want to wear the right gear for the job. And that is why I've been loving the seven inch tactical shorts, the ultimate combination of durability, mobility, and versatility from 10,000. These products were developed and tested with over 50 50 special ops members who put their products to the test by rucking, swimming, lifting, and just all around beating the product up, producing the holy grail of tough workout shorts. Simply put, 10,000 makes the highest quality, best fitting, and most comfortable training shorts I have ever worn. What I like most about them is not only do they look incredibly good, but they really can't handle anything I throw at it, whether I'm rucking, whether I'm doing, you know, kind of a CrossFit style workout, or if I'm doing kickboxing, I know they can handle the task. I actually do a lot of jumping up and down, which is my least favorite thing to do in a workout, but it's obviously great for cardio, great for endurance, blah, blah, blah. And some of the features these shorts have, one of my favorite features actually is the no bounce pocket. It keeps my phone where it's supposed to be. It's not going to fall out on me from rucking to Olympic lifting to obstacle course training. The tactical shorts not only are going to stand up to the challenge, but they're going to help you perform. I never have to worry about the sandbag destroying the waistband or have my phone pop out of those open hip pockets. And 10,000 is a direct to consumer company, which means there are no 
middlemen. So you're going to get premium fabrics, trims, and techniques that other brands just can't afford. And it's a collaborative product development. They have a team of over 200 athletes testing their gear to ensure the perfect design, fabrics, trims, and fit, including 50 special ops members who have helped develop that tactical short. They've got over 9,500 five-star reviews. They've got free shipping and returns and a lifetime guarantee. So if you're looking for a pair of shorts that are going to look good and handle everything you throw at it, then 10,000 is the way to go. 10,000 is offering you guys 15% off your purchase. Just head over to 10,000.cc. Enter our code TNQ. You're going to receive 15% off your purchase. That is 10,000.cc. Enter our code TNQ. Make sure you guys check them out. No, and yeah, it is. It's the dog on the scent yep. that mm-hmm. they turn you on to that and they get, they're just really bringing that out in people that exists in every guy who made it through buzz. So all they're doing is honing oh, it yeah. and bringing it out in you. Cause if you don't have that internally, no one can give it to you. Right. So we're just going to hone it and kind of bring it out and make sure that it's, you know, it's at the forefront of your mind that, you know, you can read amazing stories of adventures around the world or seals or, or, you know, other special forces or war. The common thing on all those stories, you never hear the stories about the people who quit. There's not like some fabulous story about some, you know, amazing battle or whatever it was that everybody just laid down and quit. That, those people get forgotten and right. they don't make the stories, yeah. right? It's in those situations you never... I remember one I had, um, we were, we were going, we were doing this, um, ship attack. So we were supposed to be diving in and come into the ship and all meet, climb the ship and then, you know, take down the ship. Right. And we come in and we drop our draggers under the thing. And we start, my partner and I start swimming under the pier to go link up with everybody else. And I dove under one of those trellises, like one of the trellises. Now I don't have my, kid on anymore or anything like that i just kind of was sinking under it was like two feet underwater and i go dive down and go under this thing and i start to come up and i'm caught something on my kit had caught on that and i'm like a foot below the surface of the water and i'm struggling i'm pushing back down i'm pushing back up and i'm getting to the point where you know the gulping thing we do yeah Oh yeah. <laughs> so I'm out of air. I'm trying to trick myself now and start gulping and sit there and go, I can't believe this. I'm going to fucking die a foot. For, I can see like the surface. Yeah. So you have right. a choice. You're like, am I just going to sit here and do, or am I going to fight with every last piece and not quit? So I kind of calmed down and then tried more things, tried more things, kept gulping, kept gulping, pushing, shoving. You know, I was going to break that trellis if I had to. Yeah. And eventually it lets loose and up I come, I pop up. There's my swim buddy. Hey, what the fuck were you doing, dude? Let's go. Yeah, that's the like, best hey, part. <laughs> where was I? For, I, I dude, almost I was died. Like, what do you think I was no, doing? No, that's <laughs> a real thing. <laughs> yeah. Looking for lobsters. Yeah, he's like, yeah. what the fuck are you doing making all that noise? Quit fucking around. Excuse me. I'm sorry, man. <laughs> With that, he's like, man, I was dying. I almost di- I did die. I was drowning. I was trying to, because you don't care if you get busted. It's almost like, game off. Let's, let's. <laughs> and then your swim buddy rolls up. He's like, man, you're making too much noise. Be quiet. You're like, I'm dying. <laughs> man, don't even care, dude. <laughs> and I mean, that's the funniest. When, I don't know what that is. and how Because most people be like, man, are you all right? Let's get a hug in there. And they're like, quit messing around. Let's yeah. go. Yeah, yeah it's brilliant. It, it, it's so it brilliant. Is. It's a different way that you look <laughs> so at life brilliant. and that misery and the shared piece of it. And and you know, you know what you recognize too, a very unique thing I think to the teams is, well, not it's probably not just unique to the teams, but you really learn to recognize the difference between complaining and bitching. Oh yeah, those are different. Yeah. <laughs> very different things. Very so different. that humor, all that stuff, you know when that guy's miserable and he's, He's just bitching to vent and he's being humorous, but he's not complaining complaining, and wallowing in his own misery. So no, nobody wallows in their own misery. Mm -mm. Guys won't tolerate that. They bring you out of it, but you can be funny as shit bitching during stuff. And those are the best. They say, the they say a bitch and sailor is a happy sailor. So when you start yeah, with hearing somebody yeah, complain, yeah. listen, because the comedy that rolls out of that is, is amazing. Yeah. And I, the funniest thing about his story is, as you know, if there's a list, list of guys behind him, he's like, look, look, the boss is drowning up there. <laughs> 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 How much longer? How much longer are you thinking? Oh, man. Dude. Should, should we get him? No, no, no. Let's see. No, no. 
He's got it. Let's see how he does this. <laughs> your, your hypothermic or whatever. I had that oh, same. Oh, because you know it's miserable, right? Yeah, it had to be. That's the only time oh, we're engaging. Same, is when that same sucks. one, that same op, Dude. it was, uh, I'd slept in poison ivy like the night before. Mm. So I was like, fuck this. I'm not wearing a wetsuit. I'm not just going to trap that stuff in there. It's only going to be a short dive. Oh, dude. Uh, I'll just skin it and I'll get, you know, the salt water on. It'll be good. It'll be good. Now, <laughs> what was going to be a 20 minute dive turned into an hour. I'm like no. freaking hypothermic, shaking, still doing all this stuff. I can't stop shaking. I got to climb this ladder and dudes look at me like, Dude, stop shaking, man. You're not gonna be able to shoot anyway. <laughs> like, stop shaking. Fucking my core temps like friggin' 90. What are you doing? That's another thing you can't explain how that feels. Like when that, when that, yeah. Because then when the core, when you really get cold and miserable, and then every little thing that, that and it's the little things that go wrong that really upset us, like that kind of stuff. It's yeah. not what you would think. Yeah. It's not that big stuff that no, people would normally freak out about. It's the, you know, the little poking on the back of you kind of, that that yeah yep yeah it does exactly and you you're right you can't explain it and you can't it's very difficult to explain the cold to people right to explain the especially you know i see people who do the the cold tubs and shit like that yeah. you're like that's cool you get a sense for it but that's voluntary right mm -hmm. <laughs> it's also doing something different to you because the whole concept is different yeah you're now imagine getting in that tub and you don't know when you're going to get out and they're not going to let you out. Or once you get out, you're going to go do some other activity and do this. And you have no time frame on it. You don't know. That's one of the things you do. I think one of the brilliances of buds and the initial formation of us is not knowing what that future is, not knowing when you're going to get out of that water Absolutely. so that you're ready to deal with adversity till whenever. And you're ready to deal with this that's a great change point. that's yeah, going to happen. Point. If I give you a timer and go, hey, you're going to be, we're going to do surf torture for the next 10 minutes. Well, that's different than we're going to do surf torture till somebody quits or I get tired. Yeah. And it's called surf torture. So you're like, you're going in, your mindset's already around the fact that you're getting tortured. It's set up that way. If they told you, it's like, hey, we're putting you in the cold tub because I love you. I don't want your muscles to be sore for 10 minutes. Go. I mean, that wouldn't even be a thing for us. Exactly. But the way they, they get into our heads already and they push us into that state. Absolutely. Yeah. And throw you a constant curve. They sure, make man. sure that you can't win. Um, so when when you think you can't, and they'll but they'll give you wins because we go back to kind of it pays to be a winner, right? We right. want to teach you that all you want to do is strive to be a winner. And then when that's all we're teaching you, we're going to make sure that you fail. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So then you got to pick yourself up from that. You can do every single thing right. And I, we saw guys, I'm sure you saw this, guys would get so frustrated and you're going, what are you doing? The game's rigged. Don't be frustrated. It's This is the best roll deal. with the punches. When they would and the guys who couldn't, they quit. Yeah. We did everything right, they asked. We showed up on time and they still sent us to the surf. And, and you're like, Dave, this is how it works. If Come they on. start, if, they, if one of the crews started winning so much, like yeah. to prove themselves, then they would start losing more. They would, instructors would make it that way just yeah. because you're trying to outdo your team. Yep. That, that, that's what that teach. They don't tell you that. Yeah. But they say it pays to be a damn winner. <laughs> and like you stay up all night polishing that floor, and they walk in with some sand with a hole in the pocket and try to look at this sand right here. And what's that all about? You, people would lose their minds. Yeah. And it's designed for that specific reason. It's it like is. somebody put, well, whoever put that win loss in your mind that that was a problem that yeah. expectation so when they and that's another thing you said i didn't think about that either when they take the future away from you like it's only yeah. the now like i can't i don't have time to think about I, I, like you're constantly i don't even know if i'll make it past this that mm -hmm. thing everything changes when you're just focusing on the on the now um, and that's your that's your time frame for the never quit idea is when it gets that adverse you do need to revert to that present get through that present and your future though you can look way out and go I'm getting through butts. So that's where I'm going. So right now I'm going to deal with the now, get through that to have this future yeah. later, but be in that present. We got one, there was a, uh, so remember the, what, what were they on Tuesday? The inspections, the room yeah. inspections. Yeah, yeah. Was it? Depending on the I, phase, I, but mostly is that Monday, then Tuesday kind of time to run. Yeah. I don't know if they changed it. They did whatever. So 
you know, everybody used to go take their uniforms. They'd go to this, uh, what was it there? A.B. Bright's? A.B. Bright Bright? Yeah. The van. That th- that's yep. right, right? A.B. Bright's, I think. Yep. A.B. Bright. <laughs> they go get them all star. You get your uniform all starched and shit. You could shave with that son nice. dude. It looked like paper when it came out of there. Yep. And sure as shit, you're going to hit the surf every time. So week three, I'm like, I'm not doing this. You know what? I'm going to starch my uniform at home. I'm not going to spend another 20 bucks. I could spend that on beer. So... I'm going to go iron my uniform, hit it with starch. It looked great. So I do it in my room. I sit there and I starch that thing. It looks awesome in my room, right? Looks good. I show up in formation <laughs> and I stand in front and I look like a bag of shit. All right. The instructors all look at it. Every single dudes are pissed. They're looking at me like, holy crap. Now the enlisted guys are like, this is going to be funny as hell. And all the other officers are lined up and they're all starched up and they're like, dude, you're going to get us hammered. I'm like, we're going to get hammered anyway. Who gives a shit? But I had 20 extra bucks in my pocket and didn't have to run <laughs> AB Brights. The instructor looks at it and he's like, which one of these kids doesn't look like the other? And everybody's like, freaking Sears, what the hell? And so <laughs> they go, he is the only smart one in the group. Why are you dumbasses still spending money at AB Bright? Yeah. Everybody but him hit the surf. Right. So in one way I won, in the other way, they just made me this whole now I'm the folks yeah. attention. That's how they do it. <laughs> you're the villain, you're they'll the they'll piss your class off at you. Oh, right. God, that's, that's, exactly. that's, dope. that's brilliant. Yeah. And, and we, brilliant. we we had one of And then after that, A B Bright was done though. Yeah. Guys started doing their own thing. Oh, yeah. Like, okay, you guys are finally wise enough. If we had some guys that weren't ready for inspection in the uniform, as soon as the instructors came ro- rolling up, the OIC would be like, Roger that, who we are and then he we'd go to the surf on our own. <laughs> and it, it screw up the uniforms and be standing like why the job we didn't even do the inspection we're like oh i thought when the instructor said hit the surf you know <laughs> but they're gonna beat you anyways yeah <laughs> they're gonna beat you anyway. they're gonna yeah, beat you exactly. anyways it doesn't matter what you do it doesn't matter what you're gonna beat you and when you when you accept that then it's easy to get through i've probably gotten more trouble in buds for laughing yeah and here. stuff the instructor said uh things that went on then that that is the other thing that you will find through nearly I'll say 99% of team guys is they have an amazing sense of humor. Humor, yeah. It is in the darkest situations, in the worst times, they have a, an incredible sense of humor. And it's, and you see it time and again, and that helps you get through things. Yeah. It, you're not, hey, it's, you know, it's life, man. You're not going to get out of it alive. Don't take it too serious, but serious enough. All right. All right. And every now and again, it'll come out on, you can tell we have it when it comes out at, at a different spot around people who aren't used to it. This one girl was telling me about a story about her grandmother had actually, she was flying a plane, she was almost 90 years old and she crashed into a lake. Wow. And she was telling a story and I was like, that's awesome. You know, I didn't know, I was like, man, you kidding me? Your grandmother, she, the story about your grandmother, she flew a plane into a lake. You know, she was partying down like 90 years old. I was like, why would you look that as a bad thing? Yeah. You'll remember yeah. that forever. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And she's like, I never exactly. thought about it like that. I'm like, well, you should. Because life is the way you said it is. And if you don't treat it like that, man, it can make it miserable. We are supported by Paint Your Life. You guys know that this is one of my all-time favorite podcast sponsors. Actually, it was one of my great friend's wedding anniversaries recently, and they asked me, Andrew, do you have any ideas for what would make a good gift for that? I didn't hesitate. Paint Your Life is the way to go. If you're looking for a special gift for someone this holiday season, something truly unique and personal, I've got a great idea for you. If you've not heard me talk about them before, at PaintYourLife.com, you can have an original painting by a world-class artist done by hand from any photo at a truly affordable price. You could send them any picture, yourself, your children, your family, a special place, maybe even a cherished pet. You can even combine photos into one painting. With Paint Your Life's compilation portraits, you can bring together family members who never had the chance to meet or create a portrait of the whole family without the need for everyone to be there for a family photo. You can order a custom-made, hand-painted portrait in less than five minutes. It's a quick and easy process. You're going to get your portrait in about three weeks. It's meaningful. It's personable. And I promise you, it is something that they're going to cherish forever. It will make the perfect holiday gift for someone you love. Christmas is just a couple of weeks away. If you're kind of on the fence about what to get someone, if you have no idea what to get your mom, your dad, your brother, your sibling, yourself, get them this. At paintyourlife.com, there's zero risk. If you don't love the final painting, your money is refunded 
guaranteed. And right now is a limited time offer. They're going to give you guys 20% off your painting. That's right, 20% off and free shipping. To get this special offer, text the word TNQP to 64,000. That's TNQP to 64,000. One more time, guys, text TNQP to 64,000. Paint your life, celebrate the moments that matter most. Yeah, exactly. You don't wallow in it. You know, you, you find the humor in it and that helps you cope and move on through stuff. And it's, I think the, di the diversity, uh, yeah, the diversity in our community is it, it teaches us about our sense of humor. Cause I say that too. People are like, Hey, what, why do some guys make it? And some guys don't and every team guy will have a different answer. But if you dig deep enough, we all, we all get to the humor part. Well, it, it usually comes up in the conversations like, you know, and then the humor is kind of, we, we kind of glaze over it. But I think it's one of the most important ones. It's like if you if you've got a sense of humor that yeah. can change, and I mean in the beginning it it's nowhere near what we've evolved into because it right. has to happen in the program. But right. if you know you can have that ability, then you, you probably do well. Yeah, and you, you get some <laughs> of the guys that are you will have some guys that are too serious. They don't have that sense of humor, and you see guys ping away. The other thing that we do is we find each other's weak spots and we mm -hmm. ping at that chink in the armor until it's no longer a chink in the arm. It's not even there. Yeah. So, I mean, it's the whole, and, and you get the guys, it's it's back to, uh, what was the movie, Stripes? Or, Lighten Up Francis? Yeah, Lighten Up Francis. You know? yeah. So as soon as you're, <laughs> Lighten Up Francis, and he will ping away at those chinks until they either forge their armor tight or they go away, yeah. you know, and they don't have any holes in that armor. Because yeah, if we're not and, messing and with you, plays a big role in that. Yeah, if you're not getting messed with, that's the problem, for sure. Because that's, that's how we do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I always feel that around here. <laughs> uh, I, I try and tell them that. It shows you love. Yeah, I, get the, yeah. I get the poke often. Yeah. Tell us about the book, Why, Why Smarter, Not Harder. Yeah, so I, I started doing this business with a, a good friend of mine. He's a retired Marine. And what we wanted to do was teach people how to think about complex problems and how to take these approaches to complex problems and the different sort of non-linear thinking tools that went behind that. And I was looking for a mechanism to kind of communicate some of these that had some standing behind it. So I took all these maxims that we say, these sayings that we have in the SEAL teams, and I just went through them and I reflected on them. And they kind of, a lot of them are like, a, you know, you know, have you ever heard of the smokers who try to quit and they wear like a rubber band around the wrist, yeah. you know, a quick little reminder. Well, these things we go back to and you'll hear them through your community all the time. So I'm like, what do these mean to me? How do they apply to me in the SEAL teams? And then how can they apply to people in their lives and in business? And what can you get from the unique things we've been able to learn and take that and apply it to everyday people that are going about their lives, you know, whatever it is, you know, corporate people, husbands, wives, students, kids. I mean, I've had kids read the book and they can pull away from it. So the idea is to kind of communicate some of these concepts and what they mean like in a double meaning uh, and, and look deeper behind them. Like one I talk about is um, one that I go counter to is pain is weakness leaving the body. You know, we hear this all the time. Yeah. That's the one that I say is total bullshit. And it's a terrible saying. Pain is pain. What's It's the alarm lights in your airplane going off or the check engine light in your car you need to pay attention to that and do something about it, not just continue to fly or do whatever. But there's a difference between discomfort, uncomfortable and pain and learning how to tell that difference and when to pull back. And especially in, you know, some of it was me also like in that one, talking to the community about the mental piece of things, because there's a time when you're broken mentally whether it's from PTSD or TBIs, you know, an actual physical type injury that you need to recognize that's alarm bells going off and you need to do something about it, not ignore it. So I take all these different ones, the smarter, not harder. I mean, the way the book's titled that I'll put a caveat in there. And I say it in the beginning of the book is that harder is a prereq doing being hard and hard work is a prerequisite. That's assumed already. That's necessary. What's going to differentiate you? Because there's a lot of people working hard. 
what differentiates you is being smarter about how you work and how you go about things. And so reflecting on your own thinking, kind of how do you look at problems in sort of a non-linear way and non-absolutes. We get so many of these absolutes are out there, but the world's gray. And so I just go through each one of these kind of sayings that we have and associate them first through a team guy story and then associate them to, this is how this applies to you in business and life. And it was just, it was something that I, I thought I could kind of put out there. It's not, there's no algorithm, there's no checklist, there's no steps to success. It's just to pique people's curiosity and get them started thinking a little bit differently. No, it's brilliant. It, it truly is. I mean, I, I once I, the kids got on the ground and I started having to read the nursery rhymes, some of those have been around forever. And even yep. if they come in different languages or the story might change, the main idea behind it's the same. And I, I, I kind of chased after wisdom my whole life. And when usually when you run into her, you know, when the silver hairs, they, when you're like, hey, that's the wisdom. It's usually short. It's real short to the point. Yep. And like you were saying, if you have like the only easy day was yesterday, it, it, that, that title's there. But if you had every team guy write what that meant to them underneath that, it would all be different but the yep. same it would all be different but the same it's kind of like looking at something seeing something and watching something i didn't even those are the same but they're also very very different and you're right pain is weakness leaving the body but well, pain will leave your body when it's done with you not before or after and as, as when we were coming up i i tried to teach my kid this the other, when he got his he got bloodied up right and then i got bloodied up after him the same kind of the same deal he's like dad how come you don't cry when you when you get hurt like that I was like, well, I used to, I used to cry. But then I noticed that that pain was that pain with that wound and what it did. And it's kind of like when I'm driving down the road, when the belt, when the dashboard lights come on, I know what it means, but I, I, I know I can keep going. Right. And so it's like our pain threshold as with life kind of ticks upward. If you want, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know what no, I mean? you're absolutely right. It does. It kind of ticks upward well, with you, man. Because if you were having the, if your pain tolerance was that of a, of a toddler, you'd be in trouble. Because I don't care how old you are, if you get into a situation for the first time, you'll react like a child. Yeah, it, no, you are. And that's, I mean, that's the other power of the teams, right? We're trying to expose you to expose as that, many yeah, situations expose as we can so that you're not surprised by them and you don't act like it's a new situation. That's our training and everything else yeah. is hundreds of iterations of doing something to create these mental models in your head that allow you when you're in it, you're not fully surprised and you're able to, I say it's, you're able to respond rather than react. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, yes, if absolutely. you're doing, cause those are different. Or, those are huge difference too. Huge difference, right? If I'm boxing with somebody, I want, I want to throw a fake to get you to react so that I can make my next move. Yeah. If you're good and you're like, you know, I know it, maybe I'd be boxing with the guy and I know I throw like a jab and he slips in and under it. I'm like, okay, this dude's not, that's not a reaction. That's a response. Right. And he knows what he's doing. Right. <laughs> okay. We're in for a little something here. So there's a whole, it's that attitude that you're trying to do and the way we do it and the way that you teach your kids and the way that we learn and we constantly seek wisdom is through storytelling. Yep. 100%. I truly we, believe we that. Tell too. stories that connects to people's brains that sets off dopamine centers that allows you to remember. If I just give you a PowerPoint with, all the bullets of wisdom you don't you're like what well, you're not going to retain that shit. but the stories that the seals before us told to us that our peers told around us the stories start to give you the wisdom and they convey lessons that you remember and you can internalize and those stories are one perspective yeah of course and i can you, always see my you, know, you can see them in it. it that was the thing is when they were explaining it, you could like kind of visualize them in it and then yourself with them in it and it, it helps perpetuate that was the best lessons is when those old timers be like all right i got a story to go with that you want to hear it <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> yeah, i was like yeah you know, I want to hear it. everybody perked Absolutely. up and listened uh, right? then they were really learning yeah because they were talking and, to you to help you it's almost as if i was talking about this the other day i could tell my my kid to do something he looks at me like i'm just like what and then you could be standing there right beside him telling the same damn thing and it's like Roger that. You know what? That was great. <laughs> uh, and I, whatever that, that, that's the universe and her ultimate wisdom. I think they put that, that barrier up, but. It, oh, they do. And that's like, people will ask me, you know, what's, what's the hardest thing you've ever done or had to do. And 
I'm like, I tell you, I think the most challenging, hardest thing is being a parent, parent trying yeah, to raise, parent. raise adults. Yeah. And you're, you are thrown for shit, dude. My heart rate, like I jump out of the plane in the middle of the night, 10,000 feet and my stupid, you know, I have a malfunction cutaway and my heart rate doesn't go up. Mm. You know, my kid runs out like towards the middle of the street when they're younger. <laughs> My heart rate like rockets up to friggin' once again. I'm like, holy shit, what are you doing? What is that? I know it. Same thing. After everything that we've been through, I'll be sitting on the couch and hear them smart off to their mom be like, what? <laughs> <laughs> <Exactly. laughs> yeah. It's it's different it is, lessons, it, different it training. It's an unbelievable challenge. And it's a uh, and it's one of it's very similar to the teams in that the highs are super high. Yep. And the lows can be super low too. And so you find humor in it and you keep moving on and you navigate it. You don't control it, you know, and what's in the rear, like how many, I'm sure as you get up there parenting, same as me, I'm, I would venture to say same as every parent, you have some things you've done that you look back and go, look, I fucked that up. Yeah, of course. <laughs> right. Are you kidding me? We do yeah. that in the teams every day. I'm definitely gonna do it as a parent. <laughs> exactly. So that's all in the rear view mirror though. Then you, you learn from that and you keep going. If you dwelled mm -hmm. on that with your kids, you'd be like insane. Oh yeah. You'd be losing your mind. You're like, yeah, sorry about that. It'd make them miserable too. I mean, that, I, I couldn't even, that, that'd be the, that's right. Cause you're also setting an example um, for them. You know, you're, they're what, what they see, what they do, what yeah. you do. And that's important. That's that's what we try to do in the teams too. You you model the behavior that you wanted the new guys to be ha to have, and then all your peers, you all modeled each other's behavior. Hey, here's some of the general core values that we have. We expect we expect you to have integrity. Yeah. Meaning meaning that you're going to be consistent in your deeds and actions, right? Um, the or your deeds and your words are going to be consistent. Yeah. So that if you say something, your words, your bond, we expect that, right? We expect you to be there. We expect you to be there for your brother and we expect you to never quit. Yeah. And so you have these core values and you model those and you show that. Yeah. And we're, I mean, there's things that I saw, like, I think one of the things that team guys loathe the most is hypocrisy. They cannot stand oh, yeah. it. No, when... that, that, that's a game changer right there, man. Yep. And it's, and you see it in today's society and everything else. And guys, it is the, the biggest thing. And team guys have an incredible bullshit detector yep. and a nose for hypocrisy. And they won't always call it out, but they'll just go. Oh, you'll know. Okay. Noted. Yeah. Got it. You'll, okay, exactly. I see where you stand. Yeah. You're full of shit. That's one of those that gets thrown in there that it's real tough to. Oh, yeah. With, with especially yeah, come with back us. from you especially can't. with you, us, you man. Know, you lose like, your dude. You lose your honor and yeah. you lose your credibility if you engage in that stuff. And we see that in the higher leadership a lot, and it's it's a problem. Let's take a second to thank our friends over at Fight Camp. The holidays are right around the corner, which means so is the new year. If you want to make 2022 your best year yet, if you want to reach those fitness goals, I want to tell you about something that will revolutionize the way you work out. Fight Camp brings the best workout in the world into your home, and they make it fun. You can learn to box and kickbox from home with access to world-class programming, elite trainers, premium equipment, and smart technology that turns your workout into an interactive experience. There are thousands of classes with new workouts added each week. You're always going to find something new. You can use filters to explore different workout styles, links, trainers, difficulty levels, and more. You'll never get bored. If you're feeling intimidated, maybe you're kind of at the beginning stages of your fitness journey and don't, you don't know where to start. Fight Camp, I'm telling you guys, makes it fun. They make it simple. No matter what your experience, no matter where you're at, they've got a path that you can take. If you have little to no boxing experience, Fight Camp will have your back. They've created programs specifically designed to teach you the basics of boxing and kickboxing so you can build that strong foundation. It's a full body workout. Boxing combined with plyometric workouts, bringing the best of both cardio and strength training into one, giving you an intense full body workout. I promise you, you're going to be sore. Maybe you don't want to hear that, but I'm telling you, if you want to have the best 2022 yet, this is the way to go. And it is a full package. Fight Camp comes with all the gear you need to start boxing from home, including a freestanding punching bag, boxing gloves, quick hand wraps, and smart punch trackers. And it takes up less space. Than yeah. Dave, I'm going to put you on the spot, man. You got to leave us with a piece of never quit advice, maybe from your book, maybe from life. What piece of never quit advice do you have for the listeners? Yeah, like I said, the 
control what you can control, you know, influence what you can influence, and then you navigate the rest and you keep moving forward. Future oriented mindset. And whether that time scale for you is one foot in front of the other, or it's week to week or month to month, keep moving forward. You can change things. Things will change. So you just, I mean, you just got to keep on keeping on. That's it. Mm-hmm. Man, that was awesome. I know it was good. Thanks, brother, man, for doing that. How can people get your book? How can people support you? Yeah, then go to dcsears.com. And from there, they'll see my business and they'll see the book and the links to it. It's on Amazon and, you know, Barnes and Noble and all that jazz. Uh, I actually just started, you know, one of these things is I grow or not. I just started an Instagram account. I've been resisting this, you know, <laughs> social media <laughs> thing. So they can find me on Instagram. You probably double my followers from like 10 to 20. We will. Yeah, we'll help you out with that. We're going to find a couple. <laughs> what's your Instagram? What's your Instagram we'll username? DC Sears. All right. You at least got two followers in the room. So you. Oh, there you go. We already got you a 10% so increase. You're stuck with me, bro. I mean, we're, we're, yeah, we're teammates. I can't get away from you. Then, then I guess I got, I got to post stuff to it, right? That's right. So is, that, is that how that works? That works, my friend. <laughs> so we'll figure that out, you know, teach an old dog new tricks. That's awesome. Hey, man, well, thanks for being on. Uh, we love sharing these stories. Uh, man, just taking the time. We appreciate it. Yeah, brother. Yeah, I really appreciate you guys having me. It's good to see and connect.